英語聞き流し10分間名作リスニング英語テキストと MP3 ダウンロードその他の物語はホームページよりご利用いただけます 88thpp.com 88thpp.com She shall play with me, said the little robber child. She shall give me her muff, and her pretty frock, she shall sleep in my bed. And then she gave her mother another bite, so that she jumped, and ran round with the pain, and the robbers laughed, and said, Look, how she is dancing with the little one. I will go into the carriage, said the little robber maiden, and she would have her will, for she was very spoiled and very headstrong. She and Gerda got in, and then away they drove over the stumps of felled trees, deeper and deeper into the woods. The little robber maiden was as tall as Gerda, but stronger, broader shouldered, and of dark complexion, her eyes were quite black, they looked almost melancholy. She embraced little Gerda, and said, They shall not kill you as long as I am not displeased with you. You are, doubtless, a princess? No, said little Gerda, who then related all that had happened to her, and how much she cared about little Kay. The little robber maiden looked at her with a serious air, nodded her head slightly, and said, They shall not kill you, even if I am angry with you, then I will do it myself, and she dried Gerda's eyes, and put both her hands in the handsome muff, which was so soft and warm. At length the carriage stopped. They were in the midst of the courtyard of a robber's castle. It was full of cracks from top to bottom, and out of the openings magpies and rooks were flying, and the great bulldogs, each of which looked as if he could swallow a man, jumped up, but they did not bark, for that was forbidden. In the midst of the large, old, smoking hall burned a great fire on the stone floor. The smoke disappeared under the stones, and had to seek its own egress. In an immense cauldron soup was boiling, and rabbits and hares were being roasted on a spit. You shall sleep with me tonight, with all my animals, said the little robber maiden. They had something to eat and drink, and then went into a corner, where straw and carpets were lying. Beside them, on laths and perches, sat nearly a hundred pigeons, all asleep, seemingly, but yet they moved a little when the robber maiden came. They are all mine, said she, at the same time seizing one that was next to her by the legs and shaking it so that its wings fluttered. Kiss it, cried the little girl, and flung the pigeon in Gerda's face. Up there is the rabble of the wood, continued she, pointing to several laths which were fastened before a hole high up in the wall, that's the rabble, they would all fly away immediately, if they were not well fastened in. And here is my dear old Bach, and she laid hold of the horns of a reindeer, that had a bright copper ring round its neck, and was tethered to the spot. We are obliged to lock this fellow in two, or he would make his escape. Every evening I tickle his neck with my sharp knife, he is so frightened at it. And the little girl drew forth a long knife, from a crack in the wall, and let it glide over the reindeer's neck. The poor animal kicked, the girl laughed, and pulled Gerda into bed with her. Do you intend to keep your knife while you sleep? asked Gerda, looking at it rather fearfully. I always sleep with the knife, said the little robber maiden. There is no knowing what may happen. But tell me now, once more, all about little Kay, and why you have started off in the wide world alone. And Gerda related all, from the very beginning, the wood pigeons cooed above in their cage, and the others slept. The little robber maiden wound her arm round Gerda's neck, held the knife in the other hand, and snored so loud that everybody could hear her, but Gerda could not close her eyes, for she did not know whether she was to live or die. The robber sat round the fire, sang and drank, and the old female robber jumped about so, that it was quite dreadful for Gerda to see her. Then the wood pigeon said, Coo! Coo! We have seen little Kay. A white hen carries his sledge, he himself sat in the carriage of the Snow Queen, who passed here, down just over the wood, as we lay in our nest. She blew upon us young ones, and all died except we two. Coo! Coo! What is that you say up there? cried little Gerda. Where did the Snow Queen go to? Do you know anything about it? She is no doubt gone to Lapland, for there is always snow and ice there. Only ask the reindeer, who is tethered there. Ice and snow is there. There it is, glorious and beautiful, said the reindeer. One can spring about in the large shining valleys. The Snow Queen has her summer tent there, but her fixed abode is high up towards the North Pole, on the island called Spitsbergen. Oh, Kay. Poor little Kay, sighed Gerda. Do you choose to be quiet? said the robber maiden. If you don't, I shall make you. In the morning Gerda told her all that the wood pigeons had said, and the little maiden looked very serious, but she nodded her head, and said, that's no matter, that's no matter. Do you know where Lapland lies? she asked of the reindeer. Who should know better than I? said the animal, and his eyes rolled in his head. 
I was born and bred there, there I leapt about on the fields of snow. Listen, said the robber maiden to Gerda. You see that the men are gone, but my mother is still here, and will remain. However, towards morning she takes a draught out of the large flask, and then she sleeps a little, then I will do something for you. She now jumped out of bed, flew to her mother, with her arms round her neck, and pulling her by the beard, said, Good morrow, my own sweet nanny goat of a mother. And her mother took hold of her nose, and pinched it till it was red and blue, but this was all done out of pure love. When the mother had taken a sup at her flask, and was having a nap, the little robber maiden went to the reindeer, and said, I should very much like to give you still many a tickling with the sharp knife, for then you are so amusing, however, I will untether you, and help you out, so that you may go back to Lapland. But you must make good use of your legs, and take this little girl for me to the palace of the Snow Queen, where her playfellow is. You have heard, I suppose, all she said, for she spoke loud enough, and you were listening. The reindeer gave a bound for joy. The robber maiden lifted up little Gerda, and took the precaution to bind her fast on the reindeer's back, she even gave her a small cushion to sit on. Here are your worsted leggings, for it will be cold, but the muff I shall keep for myself, for it is so very pretty. But I do not wish you to be cold. Here is a pair of lined gloves of my mother's, they just reach up to your elbow. On with them. Now you look about the hands just like my ugly old mother. And Gerda wept for joy. I can't bear to see you fretting, said the little robber maiden. This is just the time when you ought to look pleased. Here are two loaves and a ham for you, so that you won't starve. The bread and the meat were fastened to the reindeer's back, the little maiden opened the door, called in all the dogs, and then with her knife cut the rope that fastened the animal, and said to him, Now, off with you, but take good care of the little girl. And Gerda stretched out her hands with the large wadded gloves towards the robber maiden, and said, Farewell. And the reindeer flew on over bush and bramble through the great wood, over moor and heath, as fast as he could go. Dizza! Dizza! was heard in the sky. It was just as if somebody was sneezing. These are my old northern lights, said the reindeer, look how they gleam. And on he now sped still quicker, day and night on he went, the loaves were consumed, and the ham too, and now they were in Lapland. Sixth story. The Lapland woman and the Finland woman. Suddenly they stopped before a little house, which looked very miserable. The roof reached to the ground, and the door was so low, that the family were obliged to creep upon their stomachs when they went in or out. Nobody was at home except an old Lapland woman, who was dressing fish by the light of an oil lamp. And the reindeer told her the whole of Gerda's history, but first of all his own, for that seemed to him of much greater importance. Gerda was so chilled that she could not speak. Poor thing, to the Lapland woman, you have far to run still. You have more than a hundred miles to go before you get to Finland, there the Snow Queen has her country house, and burns blue lights every evening. I will give you a few words for me, which I will write on a dried haberdine, for paper I have none, this you can take with you to the Finland woman, and she will be able to give you more information than I can. When Gerda had warmed herself, and had eaten and drunk, the Lapland woman wrote a few words on a dried haberdine, begged Gerda to take care of them, put her on the reindeer, bound her fast, and away sprang the animal. Dizza! Dizza! was again heard in the air, the most charming blue lights burned the whole night in the sky, and at last they came to Finland. They knocked at the chimney of the Finland woman, for as to a door, she had none. There was such a heat inside that the Finland woman herself went about almost naked. She was diminutive and dirty. She immediately loosened little Gerda's clothes, pulled off her thick gloves and boots, for otherwise the heat would have been too great, and after laying a piece of ice on the reindeer's head, read what was written on the fish skin. She read it three times, she then knew it by heart. So she put the fish into the cupboard, for it might very well be eaten, and she never threw anything away. Then the reindeer related his own story first, and afterwards that of little Gerda, and the Finland woman winked her eyes, but said nothing. You are so clever, said the reindeer, you can, I know, twist all the winds of the world together in a knot. If the seaman loosens one knot, then he has a good wind, if a second, then it blows pretty stiffly, if he undoes the third and fourth, then it rages so that the forests are upturned. Will you give the little maiden a potion, that she may possess the strength of twelve men, and vanquish the Snow Queen? The strength of twelve men, said the Finland woman. Much good that would be. Then she went to a cupboard, and drew out a large skin rolled up. When she had unrolled it, strange characters were to be seen written thereon, and the Finland woman read at such a rate that the perspiration trickled down her forehead. But the reindeer begged so hard for little Gerda, and Gerda looked so imploringly with tearful eyes at the Finland woman, that she winked, and drew the reindeer aside into a corner, where they whispered together, while the animal got some fresh ice put on his head. 
Tis true little K is at the Snow Queen's, and finds everything there quite to his taste, and he thinks it the very best place in the world, but the reason of that is, he has a splinter of glass in his eye, and in his heart. These must be got out first, otherwise he will never go back to mankind, and the Snow Queen will retain her power over him. But can you give little Gerda nothing to take which will undo her with power over the whole? I can give her no more power than what she has already. Don't you see how great it is? Don't you see how man and animals are forced to serve her, how well she gets through the world barefooted? She must not hear of her power from us, that power lies in her heart, because she is a sweet and innocent child. If she cannot get to the Snow Queen by herself, and rid little Kay of the glass, we cannot help her. Two miles hence the garden of the Snow Queen begins, thither you may carry the little girl. Set her down by the large bush with red berries, standing in the snow, don't stay talking, but hasten back as fast as possible. And now the Finland woman placed little Gerda on the reindeer's back, and off he ran with all imaginable speed. Ego聞き流し10分間名作リスニング英語テキストとMP3ダウンロードその他の物語はホームページよりご利用いただけます。88thpp.com 88thpp.com